Okay, so a discussion was up on the Facebook group about uh, adding a light tower. And I mentioned you can have it do different things, and someone said, oh, no, you just uh, you just turn the lights on. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so if you're using the pre-populated menus, uh, yeah, that's all you can do, but you can actually do more. I uh, just wanted to show how it's done. So the outports or outputs are generally right here in this row. I think there are a couple more up here, but uh, you have to check your individual PLC. They do vary. Uh, there are inputs as well, so you can use inputs and outputs and you can program them in uh, site config. So you get into site config and you can add them. Uh, depending on your machine configuration, you may or may not have enough uh, outputs to do this. If you don't have enough outputs, you don't have enough outputs. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's assume you have a base model machine and you have some extra outputs, so you can do some stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and show how you would do that. Um, inputs, I know you can add functions so you can have like start and continue uh, on an input and that can be a thing like you could program like for instance add this to a uh, normally open button and you could have that as input one and basically you would run a wire over to input one uh, with uh, that would when you close the circuit on the input or when you feed it power from the common to the input, it will see that button being pushed and it will do what you tell it to do. In this case, it would uh, be like pressing the start button on the remote, uh, but it could be a hardwired switch. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna go over to the outputs because that's mostly what we care about. Uh, so in my case, this is kind of how I have mine wired. So if you don't have, them don't have them wired, you would find the open outputs on your PLC figure out which ones are convenient to use, and find the numbers off of them, and then figure out what you want to assign to what number, and then wire it accordingly. So the, they are all marked, and mine, we found, I think there were like 15 outputs that aren't used. Um, so that's kind of what we have done there. Now, if you want to do this, ne the next thing, where you can make them blink on and off, or turn on when it gets to dock, things like that, uh, you can do this next thing. You would go to custom output configuration you click add and you can call it something um, just for demonstration I'm going to I'm going to make a new one and I'm going to type up something so we're going to call it see I can change stuff and we're going to put it on output uh, eight, uh, eight yeah I'll put eight okay and it's going to be a locked output and we're going to save that okay now i'm going to run over to site cut okay we're in site cut obviously this is on my office computer not on my live machine but i do have my live machine edited so uh so we see here that uh now i have uh ci can change stuff as my output and i can turn c i can change stuff on and off i also have alarm too so let's go ahead and turn this on at the end of a part, or we'll have it turn on while it's cutting and turn off, whichever. Okay, so let's go edit PLC. We have to type our password in again. Okay, okay. And we go to, generally you're going to modify things in process flow, at least that's where I find uh, something is useful. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and file begin, we're going to add after so this is going to be when i press the start button it's going to do this so we're going to open output see i can change stuff then we're going to have it turn it off yes we're going to save that and then we're going to go before the file ends we're going to add uh close out output turn off see i can change stuff and then and then we're going to go here and we're going to, let's see here. So it's off right now. I'm going to add before, digit output, open output, see I can change stuff. Add, let's see here. So I have it turning on when this one is turning off. So right here, I'm going to add before 
close output. And I'm going to have this one open output. So we can kind of see that I'm, yeah, and you can have it before or after, depending on which way you want it to go. If, if that matters, it oftentimes does not. So let's see, where am I closing or opening? Closing. Close output. Okay. And we're going to save that. All right. Now we're going to draw two squares. Draw a rectangle. That way we can kind of see what's going on here. I'm going to tell the imaginary machine to go back to the dock. All right. And we're going to go to CNC so we can see this stuff. Now, what should happen is when we press the start button, the exhaust fan is going to come on. Uh, this output should come on and it's going to run. And when it's done cutting, it will turn this output off. Then it will go back to the uh, dock. Then these two are going to blink and the exhaust fan is going to stay on the whole time. So let's see how that works. And everything else is set. So start. Yeah. Okay, exhaust fan is on. See, I can change stuff is on. It has turned, see, I can change stuff off. And now we see them blinking. And that's it. That is done. Uh, so it finished the sequence and that completed the program. Uh, so that would run every single time uh, you run a part. So you, and you can adjust that so that it, you know, does whatever you need to do. It's pretty easy. Again, you can break things on your machine, so, you know, use care. But this can be a great way to uh, do something you need to have done when you go to change a part out. For instance, you could turn on an auxiliary um, vent fan to exhaust the cabinet more thoroughly before you uh, enter the cabinet to change a part out. Say if you're cutting stainless and you want that, that hex chrome out of your uh, work zone. Uh, if you want to turn on a sign that says change parts out now, you could do that and have it blink. Uh, a whole bunch of things you can do. But anyway, that's how you would go ahead and program it in the software. Uh, of course, you'll need to wire it in the real world too because you can only... You can only control something that's wired to the circuit board. If it's not wired to the circuit board, it can't control it. Anyway, thanks for watching.